My app uses both MySQL and MongoDB in production at the exact same time. What you're looking at right here is a high level overview of what the backend architecture of my site looks like. What we do is we take data from the SEC, we load it into our own database, and we display it out to end users. It's a bit of a simplification, but it's generally what we do. And these are the four major components of how we make that happen. So why do we have these two different databases running at the exact same time when it's just one website doing one thing, displaying data out to the end user? And the reason for that is because we have two wildly different data sets that do wildly different things. So over here in the Planet Scale DB, we have our user management and our site management. It effectively runs the business logic of our app versus this MongoDB instance over here, this is what runs the data of our app. Insider Viz is a data platform. What we do is we provide data to people and that data doesn't change. It's effectively a fixed collection that we need to be able to run aggregations and queries over and add to over time that we can then display out to the end user versus this is user data, which is very different and works very differently. So it makes a lot of sense for us to split these up. The way that sort of works on the request response type thing is we have the web app right here, which will communicate back and forth with the database itself. So since we're using Next.js, we have a backend API right there, which can then connect up to this planet scale database, it goes back and forth to help get the users in and out of the database, get their payments in and out of the database, etc. Well, we don't hold payments in the database, but the records of them having bought something, Stripe handles all the payments. Don't do your own payment provider solution. That will be a disaster, I promise. Then over here, we have the forms API, which is what actually returns all the forms down to the end user. So we have a request response pattern right here. And then of course, this connects over to the MongoDB instance, which sends this down. And why am I making this video just to show you this boring little diagram of all this and to tell you that we have two wildly different data sets. The reason I'm showing you this is because you probably don't need it yourself. There is probably not a reason for you to have two different databases and it will probably cause unnecessary complexity. The reason why we do it is like I said, we're a data platform. This is basically just, we kind of just use it like a data bucket more than anything. It's less of a database that changes over time with users coming in and out and we're constantly doing reads and writes to it and transactions. We are doing that over here, but we're much more doing it in the fashion of here's a fixed data set of things that have happened over time. And then we just want to mess with that. And it's also for developer productivity reasons, because we don't want to, we constantly change how this is working and how we're handling the data in here. So we're constantly messing with this database. I don't want to be constantly messing with my users database and it's also a factor of SQL versus no SQL and in here we're using SQL obviously we use SQL because it makes a lot of sense to have a users object which points to a transactions object so we can have a very easy relationship to keep track of you know what they have bought and all that stuff SQL makes a lot of sense for that use case versus MongoDB makes a lot of sense when we have form after form and it's a ton of nested JSON unordered data. It makes a lot more sense to just put it in effectively a storage bucket is kind of how we use it. Hopefully this quick little look at how things work behind the scenes gives you a better understanding of why we have two different databases, why our backend is kind of weird and why we do things in such a bizarre way. The reason why this Go Forms API is over here is because we have to run a lot of aggregations and we have to run you know data computations which really benefit from concurrency and parallel, well, not parallelism, concurrency. It benefit a lot from concurrency and Go is the perfect language to do that in. So we have our API over here. There are future restructurings that we're probably gonna end up doing to where we might just have two planet scale databases, everything running on the edge. That is something we're really looking into, but hard to say for now, but it's certainly for this end, for this use case right here, this little setup worked well, it made a lot of sense, but you probably don't need something like this at the end of the day. Next app talking to a planet scale database or a Go API talking to MongoDB, talking to some other front end framework usually makes a lot more sense. The every use case is going to be different, but my general advice is unless you have a very compelling and good reason to just stick to one database and stick to the database that makes the most sense for your problem. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.